What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Zoe with Notice Off DFS here to bring you that WNBA slate breakdown for the one game completely flipped and changed slate that we have today. We have the Lynx taking on the Dallas Wings, and we just got some news that Arike Ogumwale will not be playing today. So, um, had a whole video recorded, whole video set, had to scrap that video in the middle of it because it was already long enough, and now I have to redo the whole thing pretty much. Um, of course, as always, if you guys are new here, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the content I put out over here on the channel. And drop a like on this video if this video or any of my other videos help you guys win some money. Uh, real quick, shout out to everybody. Thank you so much for helping me reach the 1,000 sub mark. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Definitely going to have to do some type of giveaway or something over here on the channel for just reaching the milestone. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Um, and again, just, just thank you. I honestly, when I, I started this, what, two years ago almost? Now, this will be my second full season actually covering the WNBA and I'm, I'm doing the YouTube breakdowns and stuff like that. So I really do want to appreciate and, and just really give a thank you to everyone that has supported the channel and just watch the growth of it continue. And hopefully we just continue to go up from here. I'm definitely going to continue to get better covering other sports and things like that and just bring you guys content because I do enjoy doing this and it, it is quite fun, especially the live streams and stuff like that, getting to talk and, and um, interact with people. So uh, if you guys got to uh, tune in on Sunday, I did do a miniature live stream, was watching some of the, um, the first game, the Chicago Sky taking on the Fever in that game. We had some some good conversations in that. So definitely, uh, if you guys are new here, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button because I never know when I actually can go live and just talk, shoot the shit, talk about the WNBA. And if you guys do enjoy the content, you know, you're, you're definitely in for a good channel, good treat, and everything that I do offer over here. Uh, for but uh, with that being said, since it is just a one-game slate, of course, you know, got to sit here and do a small recap. Go over the, the slates on Saturday and Sunday, just simply because, of course, I don't normally record over the weekend, uh, especially on my days that I work and things like that. But um, we had a nice two-game slate on Saturday. Saturday, I put up three different cores on the Discord. And if you were able to, to get in there, then hopefully you got this beauty right here, which was one of my cores. This is my line that I, I um, had right here. I took down the $33, one first place, tie, um, no ties, anything like that, took it completely. And it was pretty close to winning the uh, 15K fadeaway. The lineup was Sabrina, Bree Jones, Carrington, Jonquil Jones, uh, Kalani Brown, and Asia Wilson. Kalani was my, my uh, punt play. Asia Wilson, if this game would have, um, I'd say be closer, was definitely, if it could have been closer, and if we could have got the Aces to come out and put their foot on their necks and actually... Um, you know, play up a little bit more. If I would have got the, the Asia Wilson 27, 28 point type game or something like that, I definitely feel like I could have scored a, a hell of a lot higher than what I actually did in this game uh, completely. But um, again, still not bad to go ahead and be able to take down first, especially of course, Sabrina was low owned, low, low, low owned and Sabrina popped uh, in this game. Uh, 15 points, 12 assists was a beautiful thing to have. And then of course, John Quill Jones uh, putting up, I'm pretty sure this was her career high uh, going up against them, 34 points, eight rebounds, beautiful game from her. Couldn't have went wrong with Brianna Stewart, but just the matchup for Jones, uh, it's been kind of a play attacking centers going up against uh, Kia Stokes. They've actually done pretty well. And um, I, I love this spot for uh, JJ here. Uh, definitely was a moneymaker for me. So I uh, went with it and wrote it out and definitely cashed out. It was was pretty good uh, to have it right there. And then um, rest of the line, of course, climbing. Like I said, she was the value. I expected to get a little bit more from her. She didn't do enough for me. And then Carrington pretty much was benched the whole fourth quarter. But she was popping off. Could have been uh, even better. Um, definitely if you would have went with the Van Ham, DNP, all of a sudden, now I'm going to play today game. Uh, you definitely cash out very well because she came in a couple of blocks, uh, was knocking out her threes, and of course got the blowout run in, in that game and did very well. Uh, Bree Jones, she kind of just stopped in the, in the second half, really didn't do too much for me. But nonetheless, 182 was a low scoring day uh, for it, but still was able to cash and, um, yeah, you know, can't complain about that. And then, of course, it's, it's the tale of, of two tales in regards to uh, how the weekend went. Um, these games on Saturday, they were not bad. The Sun, they looked dominant, as always, in, in their fashion. AT close to a triple-double. Uh, fell short with one rebound and one assist right there. Big T played up. She played very well. Uh, that's definitely going to be a thing, taking uh, some of these rebounding bigs that can actually uh, command in their um, in the paint going up against the Sun. That's definitely something that I really was able to pay attention and notice uh, in that game because uh, Tierra, she played very well in that game. Um, the Aces, of course, again, it's crazy how one player makes a very huge difference for for a team and how they can play and, and what they look like uh, out there on the court. Um, going over to Sunday, Sky and the Fever. This game right here, it it was a, it was good to see the Sky fight. It was good to see that the Fever that um they're 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 clicking 
they're they're getting it going. Uh, Clark bounced back in a major way in this game. 23 points, 9 assists, 8 rebounds. Close to a near triple-double uh, in this game. Some really good defense that she was uh, actually out there playing. Two blocks, and the blocks were loud. They were not little uh, blocks that she actually went out there and she got. But looked very good. And then Boston. Uh, me and, and a lot of the guys, and if, if you've heard me, I've been critical of Boston to start the season. The way that she's looked, the way that she's been playing out there. But she's looking now like she's in shape. She looks like she's in shape. The way that she's actually running the floor, uh, setting the screens, getting involved. Um, you can see the practice is actually showing with these girls now out here on the court. They're looking more more in tune, more together as they're playing out here. I know that we always see all the off-court issues and things like that for the Fever, but they look better now. Um, if we can continue to, to string together some more consistency from the Fever, if Clark can can just keep it going and continue to you know show the playmaking shots that she has, be able to find her shot, uh, take over whenever she needs to because she took over late into that third in the beginning of that fourth quarter. She took over the game, actually uh, went on a nice little streak where she was just scoring. I think she scored like uh, six or seven straight at one point, and it was good to actually see that. And just Boston was just dominant out there, 14 rebounds, 19 points. It was beautiful, but not to, uh, to undercut and to shy what the sky did. They made a shakeup. They changed the starting lineup. Finally, we got Carter starting, played 28 minutes. Only thing that bothered her was the fact that she got into a little bit of foul trouble. That, that It's not bad, but um, it, there's no one in the league that's as fast as Carter. That's that's one of the biggest things I know. There's, there's nobody in this league that is as fast as Kendra Carter. When she gets downhill and she wants to get to the, to the rim, she can get there. She is a Russell Westbrook type player in the league. Literally, even the attitude, everything that she has. She's a Rus Russell Westbrook type player, straight up. Um, MM, she finally found her shot, was out there 207 from three, but 10 to 22, took 22 shots. That's that's more along the lines, kind of what I expect to come from her. 22 points, four assists, three rebounds, two steals. Not bad, not not a bad, not at all. More back to her fantasy production that we actually expect and want from her um, on the slate. Lindsay Allen got the start as well. They sent uh, Diamond and Dana to the bench, which Dana flourished in that role 21 minutes and pretty much put up a fantasy point per minute off of the bench. Looked pretty good back in her normal role that she actually played for this team last season. Um, Cardosa, 35 minutes, most minutes she's played so far, really good, uh, double-double for her as well, same thing for Angel Reese, she put up a double-double, uh, 4 of 13, was not very efficient, and Alyssa Smith actually gave her some trouble out there, um, but still, I want to say this is what, 5 or 6 double-doubles straight for her now, so she's looking pretty good. Over here to the Phoenix Mercury with, um, going up against Seattle Storm, the Storm just looked out of sorts, uh, the Phoenix Mercury, their defense is definitely getting better. Uh, having Brittany Griner out there be back a part of the team has definitely helped them a lot. The usage that BG is getting, amazing. Um, definitely showing why, one, she should be on the U.S. Olympic team. Let's, let's go ahead and acknowledge that right there. She is showing exactly why she should be on the U.S. Olympics team. Showing you 28 points, 9 rebounds, 1 assist, 2 blocks, a steal, dominant force and pressure. There is no woman out here who honestly can match up really good besides some of the the um Tierra McCallans out here in the league can actually match with the physicality and the dominance that BG can play with when she's she's motivated and right now you're seeing it they are looking very very good with the addition of Brittany Griner finally uh being back into that fold uh Copper went out there popped three of seven from three 30 points six rebounds two assists the Mercury they just looked like they were just clicking on all cylinders uh Storm just looked a step just 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 a step too slow uh, out there pretty much for the whole game Lloyd had a really bad shoot night. 0 of 6 from 3. The, the shooting woes uh, very much up and down. Uh, Skyler, she went out there. She did her thing. 14 points, 8 assists, 6 rebounds. Can't complain about Neko or Ezzy. Give us some effort and stuff that they gave out here on the court. Uh, did not look bad at all. But the, the main story, the main storyline from that game is just Brittany Griner, the dominance and everything that she is playing with in that game. Um, if you guys were actually able to catch the live stream that I, I went over with this one right here, I talked about the late game. And one of them was the Sparks and the Dream. And looking at it, I said, today, Brink is going to have her game. We saw Rakia Jackson. We saw a little Lee Lee off the bench. And Lee Lee is a big, Lee is a big girl. That is a big girl right there. But um, we, we got to see Brink go out there. 16 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals. Only 4 personal fouls. No blocks in this game. 24 minutes. But she put up over a fantasy point per minute. She looked very good. Very, very good out there. And I was I was very impressed with what I um, got to see. Rakia Jackson, she continued uh, her offensive uh, prowess that she's actually showing 16 points to assist, three rebounds. Didn't stop the stat sheet as much as her last game, but she still put up a very good performance out there. Um, Hamby, she actually kind of struggled. Well, not even kind of. She struggled in this game. Only uh, 10 points, eight rebounds, four assists. Definitely a, a season low for her uh, out here in what she did. And we're still seeing the Russian roulette at the guard position between Ari McDonald, Clarendon, Lexi Brown, and Kia Nurse. If they can get some more production from their actual starting guards which might be the thing that we need to shake up and get something different over here for this team 
they'll definitely be able to put it together because the young talent that they have, the Energizer Bunny and Hamby, Brink, Rakia, what they're actually bringing, and then, of course, just uh, Lee. If, if you can actually run Lee and Brink out there at the same time, put Brink at the four, Lee at the five, you might really truly have something here for this team. The upside is definitely there for them to be um, a force to be reckoned with. I'd say give them a, another couple of years, uh, two, three years, as they get some more games under the belt, mesh and gel, and get some more pieces. But the the spark, I love the upside and what I, I see from the young talent. This rookie class that we have this year, beautiful. I, um, it's, it's a very, very, very good rookie class that we have this year. All right, so uh, going over to the other side, uh, Atlanta Dream, we saw it again. Shania Parker came off the bench. Only 15 minutes in this game. They started coffee. Coffee played 10 minutes. This is the exact same, I'm going to say, bullshit that we had to deal with last season where Nia Coffee would get it, then it would be Nas Hillman, go back to coffee, and then we see a random game from um, Vladimir. It, 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 it's just so frustrating sometimes with Tanisha Wright. She gets on my nerves with her rotations and the things that she decides to do. It, it makes no sense at all whatsoever. But nonetheless, Alicia Gray. Alicia Gray, just consistency at its finest. I love what I see from Alicia Gray continuously out there on the court. Tina Charles bounced back in a major way, and I was surprised that Tina was lower owned in some of the high dollar contests uh, than what I figured that she should have been. 20 points, 11 rebounds, a double-double, two assists. Good game. Great game, matter of fact, from her. Opposing centers going up against the Sparks. They've scored very well. And I was I didn't understand why Tina was so low on it, it. It blew my mind. Now, I took a gamble on playing Howard over Gray. Figured Howard, she should have a good game. She should have did very good in this game, so on and so forth. I really, really felt like to, it, it would have been, been a good game for Howard. But no, um, 415, the inconsistency in regards to the, the, the shooting, the scoring, all those things uh, once again. But um, nonetheless, the, the dream, they pulled it out and they won. Now, I know I kind of went a little bit long on that, but uh, of course, when... It's a one-game slate. There's really not too much that uh, to go off of. The links are heavily favored. We just got the news that Arike is out. I know this is what, what everyone's coming for, but I just had to give you guys a real uh, a, a recap in regards to it. So, of course, with it being just a one-game slate, we have the showdown, of course, over here on DK. If you guys are don't have an account you want one, check the link down in the description below so you guys can get the deposit match bonus and join me over here on it. And, um, yeah, we, we can definitely um try to see if we can't figure out how to navigate this slate that's just been turned upside down so first off when it comes down to looking at the slate with the news that arike is going to be out um focusing straight solely on dallas arike being out it's going to be a tight rotation from dallas i would have to imagine especially at the guard position you're going to have to see uh tiara billings maddie uzan um and Sheldon would be the core players that I would imagine that we're going to see out there as the starting five. And then off the bench, you're going to have Kalani, you have Lopez, and then you have Source. That's all that they have to, to actually play in this game. Starters should log heavy minutes um, with the occasional rotation of Kalani. Lo I mean, it, they're all they're <sighs> with, with Kalani and Source being the only backup bigs that you you have technically. Um, Billings, I would imagine, has to be out there on the court pretty much the whole game, um, or at least majority of the game. And then same thing for Big T. Big T should should see a good chunk of minutes unless they decide they want to just run sores out there for an extended run. But with the fact that Sheldon is gonna is going to have to to play, she's gonna have to to start more than likely. We should see some minutes for Lopez Sanchez uh, here. Definitely at twenty eight hundred makes sense for a punt. I do believe that she's away from being away. Like, she's not necessarily ready for uh, the league just yet. Uh, definitely needs some more time to acclimate to it. Um, definitely what Sheldon brings. She brings the defense. She can actually score. She's been been getting minutes already, was logging some pretty heavy minutes, and, and we've seen the little bit of scoring, the playmaking, everything's already going for her. So uh, I don't mind her already, as I already had her as a value play for the day, which, of course, made sense. But now... It's pretty much going to be chalk. Uh, the way that you're going to have to figure out how to navigate is who are we going to take from links? Who who's going to be the great matchup? Things like that. Of course, everyone's going to flock to fee, 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 the high usage and everything. I'm still going to go with my same approach that I was thinking in the the game originally, and that is fade fee, fade fee. Get different. Everybody and their mother is going to play fee. Go heavier on Alana Smith. Go heavier on Courtney Williams. Go heavier on on, on Kayla McBride. 
all of those make sense to me because they all have good matchups either way uh, outside of of fee fee has a good matchup going up against um billings it, it's not a problem but i understand yes we can go ahead we can shove everything but if you don't want to duplicate leave some leave one case salary on the table and fade fee that's the best advice that i can give you now the players that of course make sense at the captain position uh fee courtney williams alana smith Kel all four of these top players make sense in the captain position to me then from the other side you could definitely look towards taking um billings tier mccowan both those i really do like the upside for them at the captain position spot uh of course more than likely going to be the highest owned ones over there from dallas in regards to who you're going to see shoved into that spot uh you can't go wrong with just going ahead and playing Sheldon. I honestly would just go ahead and just slide her into my line. That's the automatic value play. She's going to start. She's going to have to play the minute. She's going to put up fantasy point production. Either way you cut it, does not matter. Um, so that's literally your free square on today. How are you going to get different? How are you going to figure it out? Again, my approach will be fade fee. And you're going to see that in my core when I post it. I'm going to fade fee. I'm going to talk about maybe all the different avenues we can go to. Now, the fact that Dallas does have some size, we can see some more minutes from Dorka in the first matchup when they played. Uh, she went out there and she played, I want to say, like 16 or oh, 15 minutes and gave us 16.5 fancy points. So um, she's going to play again, hopefully about her 15-ish minutes. If the game does get out of hand, we can see maybe more minutes from Dorka out there, a uh, chance to eclipse 20 minutes or something like that. So we should still see a, a good chunk of minutes for her um, again. So definitely don't mind going her as a, uh, the second punt if you want to get there. And if you are still just trying to play Fee, C. Will, Alana, and McBride, just get all of that fantasy point goodness that you can actually get in this game. Um, again, it's, it's not too much to actually go with in this game. That's why I went so uh, long and hard on the breakdown uh, in regards to re recapping on the slate. We do have multiple games for the rest of this week. So um, breakdowns will definitely be able to, to cover all of that for the rest of the week. Definitely should be better than what we got today. I look forward to being able to do that. And go over those games hopefully you guys are able to cash out definitely check out some props um biggest prop i know everyone is hammering it and everyone's on it but shohei he is playing uh today in um colorado now uh, he's playing in course field we already know course field is pretty much a a hitter's paradise so uh shohei for home run tonight i know it's like plus 185 on the books took forever for some of the books to add it but um i'm playing it i got it i'm gonna be posting all of my other bets that i'm playing for tonight so if you guys are looking for that check the link down in the description for the patreon you guys gotta check that out and cash out i will see you guys tomorrow for you know, better games more games and hopefully we, we can um win a little bit of something right here peace